a society ruled by women. This perfect condition existed as long ago as a thousand orbits, when our planet Medusa belonged to the solar system of Proxima Centauri. These were the golden years of our history. Led by the Grand Council of Women, we had created a world of intellect, of leisure, and of advanced technology where the menial tasks and some others were patiently performed by our men. Then came the great comet Dionysus. As it passed, its vast mass dragged us towards the frozen infinity of outer space. Slowly at first, giving us a chance to plan and build the cities we know today deep under the surface, before Medusa was finally encased in a blanket of ice. For generations, we drifted through space. Then, one day, an expedition to the surface returned with great news. We had arrived in a new solar system, a solar system containing another life-supporting planet called Earth. proved a great disappointment to us. Contrary to all common sense, it was controlled by men. Typically, we found it to be crude, primitive, muddling along in an untidy and disease-prone existence. We withdrew, and Earth was declared out of bounds to all civilized space travelers. program for junior girls. The second part, entitled Heroines Through the Ages, will appear shortly. <laughs> Heroines Through the Ages? And what about the men? Who does the work on this planet? Who builds the cities? Who looks after the kids? Who slaves all the day over a microwave stove? Keep quiet, Adam. That's the way it is. That's the way it always will be. It's a woman's world. No, not for much longer, Shem. My plans are almost ready. Listen. Here is an important news item. Ignore it. Or we daren't. We bring you grave news from the future. A few moments ago, our prediction computers began to issue warnings of a revival of activities among the illegal men's liberation movement. Councillor Octavia, head of security, is in our prediction room at this moment, consulting the Destiny computers for details. Destiny computer. Do you see the patterns of revolt? Affirmative. Amongst which section of males? The surface workers? Negative. Bellographers? Negative. Nursing fathers? Negative. Male domestics? Positive. They will disobey their mistresses? Positive. We have to get away. When will this spaceship be ready? There's a complete photon unit to be replaced. Then replace it by sunfall. I want that yacht ready for takeoff before Neptune rises. <laughs> but that yacht belongs to Supreme Councillor Fulvia, the President's niece. I know. But how are you going to get hold of the electronic keys and the astro navigation chart? As Fulvia's personal domestic, I enjoy certain um, privileges.
Adam. Yes, madam. Turn off the ostrich and lamp. Yes, madam. Adam, did I dismiss you? No. Then come over here next to me. What do you think I've lost today? In weight, madam, or age? In age, you fool. You know, my weight never changes. About uh, three weeks. Is that all? Yes, madam. Adam, aren't you going to tell me that I look more beautiful than I did yesterday? Yes, madam. Then say it. You look more beautiful than yesterday, Supreme Counselor Fulvia. Thank you. Now you may prepare something for me to eat. Mechanic Shem. Shem, I have the keys and the charts. How long will you be? Well, I've still got a drive motor in pieces. Hurry. We don't have long. We can't drive a space yacht, Adam. It's far too difficult for a man. Get that yacht ready for launching. I'll be with you shortly. Adam? Coming, madam. Adam? Counselor Octavia tells me she has you listed as a possible subversive. Is that true? A what, madam? He doesn't understand long words. I have told her that you are my loyal domestic and that you love your mistress. Am I right, Adam? Yes, Counselor. Any male domestic on Medusa would give his life to serve a woman as beautiful as I. Am I not right, Adam? Oh, yes, Counselor. Then kiss me. I shall wish to interrogate him. I'll send him along when I've finished with him. Now kiss me properly, as though you meant it. Now you may go. Would you care for a little sleep before your council meeting, madam? Hmm. But set the hypnomat for ten micro-orbits only. Cell to finish. We must go without it. Keys and charge. But we'll lose power. Get it! We've 
done it. We're clear. They'll send a pursuit ship. Now, by the time they've organized that, we'll be well out of orbit. I still can't get full power. <coughs> it's that drive motor. Well, you're doing fine. Brilliantly. Yeah, this ship was built for pleasure, not speed. Switch on Nestor Navigational Control. Where are we going, Adam? Obtain coordinates. And lock onto that planet there. Magnify. Earth. Earth, Shem. Where well, the stories are true, men rule their own world. <laughs> Such a planet must be paradise. Paradise. You'd never make it. So did I. What's happening, Liz? We've made contact. Vicinity Neptune moving towards Uranus. Incredible. It's already approaching Jupiter. Professor Evans is on his way. Speed? 300 million miles an hour. That's half the speed of light. Check it again. It's been checked and double-checked. Three hundred and fifty million and still accelerating. Three sixty million. Three seventy million. Is that the greatest speed you can get out of this old tub? I've told you, one of the drive motors is out. Anyway, this yacht wasn't built for speed. Just coming out of Jupiter's gravitational field. If we can pick up the following solar wind, we may make up a bit of time. How long before they come after us? Ah, uh, you know how our women masters like to talk. <laughs> By the time they've finished arguing about us, we'll be through the asteroid belt. <laughs> I warned you, you domestic was dangerous. They've probably gone for some joy ride. They'll be back soon. Why should they be back? Do you think your domestic loves you so much she can't bear to be parted from you? Of course he loves his mistress. This whole thing is absurd. He would... Olivia, just get it into your head that they've escaped and are heading for Earth. I've just spoken to your aunt, the president. I've orders to fetch them back and... You're domestic, you have the right to come with me. Now, let me make one thing clear, Fulvia. You may be influential here on Medusa, but once you're on my ship, I shall be in charge. How oh, you hate men, Octavia. I don't hate them, but I have very little time for women who fall in love with them. I shall carry out my duty without sentiment and without pity. Understood? It's slowing down. 225 million. Then it is controlled. By what? Or whom? Some kind of intelligence, that's clear. From another star system? If so, we should have tracked it earlier. Rudy, 
It was first sighted just beyond Neptune's orbit. At that time, it was picking up speed. What does that suggest to you? That this was the beginning of its journey. But that's impossible. Scientifically impossible. For years, we have been collecting evidence of extraterrestrial activity. That's why this department was set up. Now we have the evidence to justify our existence. You refuse to believe it. Professor, we're picking up a second signal. Again, just beyond Neptune. Answer the asteroid belt. Approaching Mars orbit. And the pursuit ship. Too far back. They won't catch up. Locking onto automatic. <sighs> we'll make it, Shep. We'll make it. <laughs> Maybe. But what are we going to find when we get there? A new life. Freedom. They must have women on Earth. <laughs> but they're submissive women. They take orders from men. Can you imagine? <laughs> it's a crash warning. What's gone wrong? I don't know. Maybe the gravitational reading was wrong, or some slight adjustment we forgot. The video channel. Someone trying to get through. It's the pursuit ship. Ignore it. We damned! We don't take orders from them anymore. We've computed your approach. You're locked into collision course with Earth. You're ordered to abort. But how, madam? I don't know how. Feed this video signal directly into your astro-navigational channel. Our computer will instruct it from there. No, don't give them control. If you continue on this program, you will hit Earth's atmosphere at five million miles an hour and disintegrate. Please, Adam, do as she says. We'll take our chance. There is no chance. You have made a fatal error. Then we'll put it right ourselves. You don't know how. Please, Adam, if you love me, do as we say. Oh. <clears throat> Unlock the automatic. Get back on manual. Get back on manual flight! It's no use, Adam. We're dead men. Now. Still heading for Earth at a colossal speed. They're leaving deceleration very late if they intend to land. We don't know what they intend, Liz. If only we could communicate with them. Yes, you are right. It is worth a try. Look, Rudy, transmit to them all relevant data for controlled entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Right. We can just hope for the best. Was life really so bad on Medusa? <laughs> Do you remember the night I kissed the assistant commander of the yacht station? Yeah, and got three months of surface mine as a punishment. It was worth it. I'm picking up a signal from Earth. Ah, oh, what's the use? Makes no sense. We picked up this type of signal before. Hmm? It's mathematical data. Fulvia was curious and programmed a computer to read it. Feed it straight into the astronaut. Specific gravity, atmosphere density, angle of approach, they're trying to help us. It's right. They must be somewhere within 20 miles of the lake. If they land, the re-entry speed we gave them is only approximate, not knowing the size of their vehicle or the substance from which it's made. Yes? I see. Thank you. 
Forest fire five miles southwest of the lake, spotted by a helicopter. Intense heat at the center. That'll be it. Look, uh, keep that, will you, please? It's all right. I'm Professor Evans. Oh, yes. Stanley, the inspector. Look, <coughs> there's no point in going any further. We can't get within 100 yards of it. Have you seen it? Well, there's nothing to see. It's just a ball of flame at the White Hot Center. Whatever's in there can't possibly have survived. So, we return to Medusa. But they were just men, Fulvia. Male domestics. But he loved me. But there are plenty more men on Medusa. <laughs> 